Monday, June 8, 2015, uh, Common Council meeting has begun. We have our invocation by Councilman Oliver Davis. Thank you. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity to serve the city of South Bend. We thank you for all those who have gathered here. Bless our South Bend Common Council, bless our mayor and all the leaders of this town and all the members of this town that we may continue to work together to make this a wonderful place to live. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Be seated. Janice, would you read the roll call, please? Mr. Henry Davis, Jr. Henry's here. Mrs. Shea? Here. Dr. Fred Berlick? Here. Dr. Varner? Present. Vice President Oliver Davis? I'm here, but I'm not the Vice President anymore. That's right, you're not. It's okay. Honorary. <laughs> <laughs> but you're here, so that's all that matters. Uh, Mr. Furlick? Here. Council Member White? Present. President Tim Scott. Present. We've got eight present. Thank you. Report on subcommittee minutes. Report a subcommittee on minutes to the Common Council of the City of South Bend. The subcommittee has inspected the minutes of May 26, 2015, meeting of the council, and found them to be correct. Therefore, we recommend the same be approved. Signed, Tim Scott and David Varner. Approved by the Common Council on June 8th. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. We'll move to special business. Um, Janice, would you read resolution 1542? A resolution of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, recognizing and publicly honoring Bonnie Stryker for her close to 40 years of dedicated service at the Youth Service Bureau and for having an enduring and very positive impact on thousands of youth in our community. I want to interrupt just for a minute. Um, forgot to mention, if you're here for Bill 2215 regarding tall grass and the resolution regarding um, uh, youth uh, cutting grass, 1533, those have been continued to 622. So the tall grass ordinances are continued to 622. Now, Fred, please. Thank you. I'd like Bonnie Stricker to come. And do, are any of your daughters here, Bonnie? No. Okay. Well. But her sister is. My sister Rosemary. Well, does Sister Rosemary come please too also? Oh. <laughs> this is a genetic resolution. <laughs> A resolution of the Common Core of the City of South Bend, Indiana, recognizing and publicly honoring Bonnie Stricker for her close to 40 years of dedicated service to the Youth Service Bureau and for having an enduring and very positive impact on thousands of youth in our community. Whereas the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, recognized that on July 20, 1972, the Youth Service Bureau began as a result of funding from the Federal Law Enforcement Assistance Administration and matching funds from the City of South Bend, whereas the Common Council further recognized that in 1974, this hurts me to say, a Purdue Boilermaker <laughs> from the class of 1969 was hired as an outreach worker who also continued to work on earning her master's from IU South Bend in 1976 and was appointed the Youth Service Bureau's Executive Director in 1977. And whereas today, the Youth Service Bureau is the area's only emergency youth shelter, which helps children, youth, and families reach their potential for success by providing emergency shelter, case management, and continued outreach to young people in crisis by focusing on the following runaway and homeless youth outcomes of safety, permanent connections, well-being, and self-sufficiency. And whereas under Bonnie's dedicated and creative leadership, last fall, the South Bend Regional Airport became just one of three airports in the country to be designated as a safe place. And it became one of 143 safe places located throughout St. Joe County. And whereas... Youth Service Bureau partners together to help change lives and make our community great. With many partners, including the City of South Bend, Beacon Healthcare, United, Unity Gardens, United Way, Martin's 
uh, South Bend St. Joe Regional Medical Center, First Source Bank, the Indiana Youth Institute, AARC, Busy Hands of Michiana, Burkhart, Crow Horvath, and all uh, worked very closely with Bonnie and her board of directors in developing advocacy programs and volunteer opportunities to help youth in crisis. And whereas the Youth Service Bureau's humble beginnings to the practical and innovative youth development services, young mom self-sufficiency, porch life, and street outreach. Bonnie's saying that if you are not busy growing, you are busy dying. <laughs> is being championed 24-7 by providing youth with an opportunity to live free from violence, abuse, neglect, harassment, stalking, exploitation, and fear by fostering stable situations. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Common Council of South Bend, Indiana, as follows. Section 1, on behalf of all residents of the city of South Bend, Indiana, the Common Council is especially honored and proud to recognize a very special person, Bonnie Stricker, who has dedicated the last 40 years working at the Youth Service Bureau by developing best quality crisis intervention programming for youth and families. Section 2, the Common Council congratulates Bonnie for her tireless work which has and will continue to positively influence youth throughout our community. We wish Bonnie was personally challenged as a widow to raise three great daughters. Yeah, great. <laughs> Teresa, great. Maggie, and Maureen, all very young, <coughs> as she begins a rewarding and well-earned retirement. Section 3, the resolution shall be in full force and effect from and after its adoption by the Common Council and the approval of the Mayor. Congratulations, Bonnie. Thank you so much. I want, I want our South Bend's mother Teresa to say a few words. <laughs> I just have to say that my uh, beginning with government was right here. I recall, not terribly fondly, but recall coming before the Common Council in the early in the early days. Um, uh, asking for appropriations for various things because we're part of the city government. And in spite of my early uh, uh, trepidation at coming before this body over the years, I found you and your predecessors to be friends and colleagues and, and as passionate about the city of South Bend and, and youth as I am. So um, I will be gone, but I will always be thinking about ways to... Um, uh, impacted positive ways, uh, kids in our community and our future. So thank you very much for all the years uh, for yourselves and your predecessors that you have supported me and supported the Youth Service Bureau. So thank you very much. I would like to uh, ask you, yeah, I want to ask how well, you and Council, oh, no. many of whom you know. So let's start with uh, Karen White. Okay, Bonnie, what can I say? I don't know. <laughs> One, I uh, wish to thank you for your commitment to our youth and to the city of South Bend and for 40 years of devoting your life uh, towards helping not only youth but troubled youth. And I know that uh, your family had to be very supportive because many nights you were not at home. You were out working, ensuring that our youth were safe. And for that, I sincerely thank you so much. Thank you so much for your service, Jory. Thank you. It's been a pleasure working with you over the years, Bonnie. You've been an inspiration. And you've been a person who we can all look up to to say, this is the kind of a professional that I would like to be. And to leave the same kind of legacy and influence that you have left in this community. And so I enjoyed my time to come over to your office. I personally wish we could have done more financially to help you all. Uh, and so, but, you know, I thank you for what you have done here. And um, congratulations on your retirement. Go. Yeah, uh, congratulations on all you've been able to accomplish, Bonnie, and best wishes for the future and in your retirement. <coughs> Thank you so much, Bonnie, for being there for the kids. Yeah, um, I was sitting here thinking of what I was going to say. I think everybody tried to say something really quick and good and see what happens, but... Um, our short conversation back there made me think. You were, I was asking you what you were going to do for retirement, and you said, I'm going to do a couple small things, then you went into some other things, then you went into some other things, and then you went to some other things. And I was like, Florida or Hawaii? I mean, come on. What you have is a calling on your spirit. It's ingrained in your fabric as a person. It's in your DNA. So you'll probably never stop working. And because people like you, kids, families alike, have the opportunity to see a better day, 
uh, in their lives. And I want to say thank you so much for that. Um, even being over at your office and talking with you, you know, time to time and seeing what you actually really, really do, that you have to be called to do a job like that because that is like probably one of the worst kinds of situations you can find yourself into. Find yourself in, I mean, the people that come and use the services. And so, uh, you know, you will be missed. Sort surely and sorely missed around here. And thank you so much for your commitment. And Bonnie, the short time I've got to know you, I appreciate everything that you've done, and, and best of luck in the in the retirement. So yeah. Thank with that, hold on, oh, I've got a little official business to do. So, at this point, anybody wishing to speak in favor of 1542, please come to the podium. Seeing none, anyone di wishing to dare to speak against 1542, <laughs> please come to the podium. Motion to adopt acclamation. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> oh, no. okay, thank you. Uh, Janice, 1543, please. A resolution of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, thanking all members of the South Bend Police Department, the South Bend Fire Department, all medical nurses, doctors, and staff, and the countless volunteers who made South Bend 150 and the Gus Macker 3-on-3 basketball tournament such a success. I'd like to invite up uh, two of my colleagues, Dr. Linda Mansfield and her husband, and Dr. Steve Simons. Uh, Linda is the head of sports medicine at Memorial Hospital, and uh, Steve is head of sports medicine at St. Joe Medical Center. And I believe uh, Chief Cox is here also. Yep. You please come up, Steve. Representatives from police department. And is there police department? Police department. Oh, please. Police department. Great. One point now. Brian is here from the mayor's Hi. office. He could come up. <laughs> Brian, I guess you're supposed to come up also. <laughs> this is a resolution on the event we had two weekends ago, South Bend 150, which was an enormous undertaking by these people Doc. and uh, just Kylie. a wonderful event. Kylie, Kylie well. from DKS. Oh, oh, She's the key one right here. Okay. <laughs> Let me go ahead and read the resolution, and then we'll each have uh, each individual say just a few words. Um, whereas the Common Council of South Bend, Indiana recognizes that the birthday weekend celebration for South Bend 150 was a spectacular event held on May 22nd to May 24th, 2015, with an estimated 60,000 people enjoying the river lights, food courts, adventure games, and above 2,200 zip lining across St. Joe River. And whereas the Common Council further notes that thanks to the hard work dedication and tireless work of 120 SB 150 committee members, over a thousand volunteers, financial support from more than 250 organizations and individuals along with the outstanding help from the South Bend Police Department, South Bend Fire Department, for safety and logistical help of the Department of Public Works, Street Department, Parks Department's Mayor's Office visit South Bend, Mishawaka, and Downtown South Bend Incorporated who donated their time, skills, talents, and monetary donations at birthday weekend celebration, creating lasting memories for countless diverse individuals of all ages. And, whereas, the Gus Macker three-on-three basketball tournament, which have been providing opportunities and entertainment for the past 42 years around the country, were also part of the birthday weekend celebrating South Bend's past, present, and future. And whereas the Gus Macker was played on a newly refurbished Jefferson Boulevard and at the Howard Park parking lot, which provided fun opportunities for teams which were bracketed by age, height, and experience. And whereas a great volunteer network of nurses and doctors meticulously attended to twisted ankles, bruised knees, heat stroke, and a few more serious conditions, as persons of all ages and skill sets 
participated with spirit, athleticism, and enthusiasm, with medical volunteers working side by side with many of the city's public safety staff, and whereas the Common Council would like to especially thank Memorial Hospital Sports Medicine Division, Chairman Linda Mansfield, and St. Joseph's Medical Center, Center Sports Division, Chairperson Dr. Steve Simons, who along with all of their very dedicated medical personnel made this event safe and possible. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Common Council of South Bend, Indiana, as follows, Section 1, on behalf of all residents of the City of South Bend, Indiana, the Common Council thanks and honors all volunteers and especially extends its gratitude <coughs> to those who made SB 150 a safe venue for all to enjoy. Section 2, the Common Council congratulates everyone who helped and participated for a job very well done. Section 3, the resolution shall be in full force and effect from and after its adoption by the council and the approval of the mayor. So I'd personally like to ask each individual to just say a few words on what they thought of the event because I can tell you that without them it would have never occurred. So why don't you start it off, uh, Steve, and we'll kind of go to Chief Simons and Linda. Sure. Name and address, please. I'm sorry? Name and address, please. Uh, Stephen Cox, South Bend Fire Chief, uh, 1222 South Michigan Street. Ladies and gentlemen of the council, uh, I'm here really representing Chief, Assistant Chief Jim Lopez, who put in countless, countless hours of preparation and work with the SB 150 team uh, to make sure that this was a safe and uh, memorable event. It was a success. It was fantastic, and uh, we really appreciate being a part of it. Thank you. Dr. Simons? Steve Simons from St. Joe Regional Medical Center from the foreign city of <coughs> <Kalaka>. <laughs> uh, We, I'd like to just uh, thank the council for this resolution and the acknowledgement of the uh, resident physicians, all the physicians that uh, were participating in the event, and we appreciate the acknowledgement. Thank, thank you. you. Linda? Where are your kids? I'm sure you're doing sports. <laughs> <laughs> a mother. How many? Four. Four, so they're out doing sports tonight. So go ahead. Um, Linda from here in South Bend. Um, I'd like to thank um, Fred Froth for asking us to be a part of this event. Um, we gave our uh, resident physicians and our sports medicine fellows an opportunity to, to give back to the community and for all the educational opportunities they get. And gave my kids an opportunity to come out and see some good basketball and help people stay active and fit. And thank you again. Okay. Thank you. Kylie Carter, SB 150 Program Coordinator, 110 Franklin Place. I would just like to thank the council for this recognition and acknowledgement of the countless people who worked so hard to make hey. this community-changing event of such magnitude that South Bend hasn't seen in years and years and years. It was an honor to be a part of something so big, and I thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Jeff Rangerson, South Bend Police Department. <clears throat> Thank you very much for this acknowledgement. And much like Chief Cox, I'd like to recognize Lieutenant Gene Eister, who could not be here tonight, uh, for his hard work in uh, organizing this from the police perspective. Uh, countless hours he put in. Uh, and, uh, we're very happy with the results. It's just an outstanding time for everyone. Went off safely. Very few incidents, uh, fortunately. And uh, also want to recognize the uh, countless number of police officers that gave up their Memorial Day weekend uh, and without any complaints, worked extra hours, and uh, did by all accounts a great job in making this a safe venue for everyone to have a great time. So thank you. Thank you. Brian Plasky, offices on the 15th floor upstairs. Uh, there's a reason this happens only 150, every 150 years, I think. Uh, it was a year and a half in the making, so uh, as they all mentioned, countless number of people worked on it, but I would be remiss if I did not mention, and you all saw uh, him out there, but between Kylie and Aaron Perry, that was really kind of the tag team duo that made it happen, and uh, I'm surprised she's here. I thought she might have to take a month or so off, but uh, <laughs> it's definitely a testament to them and, and the support that the council gave, uh, both Budget Chair and otherwise. I saw a lot of you out there, so we appreciate that, and hopefully we can do events like that in the future, and uh, not of that scale, of course, but hopefully we can bring that kind of community feeling that we had during that weekend back again. So thank you. Thank you. Just an aside, uh, I was downtown Friday night at about 10 o'clock, and I thought there 
they were giving away something free because I couldn't get a parking spot. It was so jammed I couldn't hardly walk on the sidewalks. And it's really a testimony to what these people did because I think the river lighting in SB 15 is a, is a new start for the city. I couldn't be prouder of the efforts that these people put together. Council, any comments? Mr. Davis, we'll start with you. Yeah, definitely. I um, had an awesome time down there. Uh, Against good judgment, I signed up and played in the Gus and Macron asphalt in <laughs> 80 degree weather and forgot that I was age 35. And yeah, I had some fun, but uh, I paid for it later on. But uh, not, I recognized all of the workers that were out there, and it was quite a, uh, quite a few, everybody actually. And I thought that that was wonderful as well. Um, safe environment, things went really well. Awesome job. Thank you so much for your time and your commitment to the community. Um, where is Cedric and Brandon at? I'm not sure. We need to have them here. If Gus Merkel would have came here if, they, if those guys would have put the work in for it. We need to have Cedric and Brandon here. But outside of that, um, definitely thank you so much. And, and, and God bless you all. So thank you all. And one person we forgot to thank was Mother Nature. Saturday couldn't have been a better day. It was uh, just beautiful and wonderful event. So thank you all for all of your efforts. Well, to echo some of the thoughts of folks that have spoken already, uh, I can't tell you how many times we've, uh, individuals and, and groups have, have hyped and talked about how great an event can possibly be. And when you get to the event, it's really nice, but it wasn't really everything you expected to be. This, on the other hand, was everything and more. Um, in my time in this city, I don't recall uh, an event of that sort uh, that was planned and took so much planning was carried out, and thanks again to Mother Nature for sure, because it was a lovely weekend, <clears throat> that really brought the kind of excitement uh, that, that we saw that day, and it wasn't forced, it wasn't uh, artificial, it was, there were just a lot of excited people downtown, and hopefully that will continue and we can build upon that in future years. So thanks to all of you folks for your, your efforts. <clears throat> Hard work paid off in so many ways, and I want to thank each one of you for dedicating your time to make the whole celebration a wonderful time. And I truly had a good time myself and look forward to being at the next 150th year. <laughs> the entire event was incredible, but I'll, I'll speak on behalf of the Gus Macker Committee. Uh, just thank you so much. Um, you know, the committee, and led by Megan Huff, and had some folks in the Parks Department, as you mentioned, Cedric Cy and Brandon were on it as well. But um, you know, we were able to put in a lot of work, but the support we were able to receive from Kylie in terms of volunteers and police and fire and medical, and even just volunteers like Dr. Varner mm -hmm. who showed up and helped, and Dad who showed up and helped with medical. I mean, the amount of people uh, just for that one component of SB 150, the amount of people that provided support to make that a success, uh, you know, that happened on a multiple of, what do you think, 10 for 10 different types of events just like that. So the amount of people and, and the effort was just incredible. So thank you. I would like to echo my words of thank you to each and every one of you and for the individuals that worked with you to make this a great event. I had a lovely time. It was beyond words and would like to acknowledge our citizens, how they embraced this opportunity to come together and to enjoy the city of South Bend. And I realize that it, it has taken hundreds and hundreds of individuals to bring this to, to the level that it was. It was a work well done. And as council member, Oliver Davis has stated, hard work does pay off. The one thing that I really got out of this was in was just a joy was the energy. Uh, from Friday night when seven out of ten of, or nine of us council members were, were on stage for the proclamation, the energy, the, the good vibration and energy that was uh, downtown from all the citizens, all the volunteers, all the workers was just incredible. We sometimes get lost in the trees and the bark and everything that's going on with the city. It's good to step back every now and then and enjoy it and have the confidence and, and really say, yeah, we can celebrate and celebrate. <clears throat> so it was excellent. I appreciate our, everything that everybody did towards that. So Motion with that, to nope, oh, we need public hearing. Oh. Anybody from the public wishing to speak in favor of 1543 come to the podium? Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak against 1543 come to the podium. Seeing none. Motion to adopt by acclamation. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Thank you.
Tonight we will not have a report from the city, but we are represented by Brian Pulaski from the mayor's office. Thank you. Beautiful report. Excellent. Um, we will now resolve in the community hall. So moved. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. The committee of the whole is now called to order. Um, at this time, I would like to share with you uh, that the committee of the whole is where the Common Council sits as a committee. The title of the proposed ordinance is read by the city clerk, followed by a report from the committee chairperson of the standing committee, which held a public hearing in the bill. <coughs> the chairperson announced the committee's advisory recommendation. At this time, I would like to entertain a motion regarding Bill 22-15. Motion to continue 22-15 to June 22nd. Second. As moved and seconded. All those in favor of the motion may hear your vote. Aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion carries. Oh, Madam Chair? Now I'll ask for a motion. Before you have yes, that, uh -huh. could you clarify the me uh, meeting that's coming up regarding that? Yes, we have scheduled a special committee meeting on Tuesday, June uh, 16th at 5 o'clock, which will be held on the fourth floor, hopefully in the chambers, but we would have to ensure that this room is available. But you can uh, block your schedules to come, and we will have a committee meeting on Bill 22. Dash 15 next Tuesday at 5 p.m. The public is invited. Uh, we want to hear your concerns, your feedback. Our goal is to have the very best bill that we can possibly have for our citizens. Thank you so much, Councilman. And um, well, you said email concerns too. They can email concerns to uh, the uh, council president or any member uh, sponsor of the bill. That's Dr. Fred, uh, Fred Furlick or myself. <coughs> Or we will hear you at the Tuesday meeting as well. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Now I'd like to entertain a motion to rise and report to the. Uh, so moved. Second. Has been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, the motion carries. The full council is back in session. We will move to the resolution portion. This portion of the council meeting is where the common council hears bills filed as proposed resolutions. The title of each proposed resolution is read by the city clerk. A report from the committee person, chairperson of the standing committee which the bill was referred to an advisory review and recommendation is then given. If the proposed resolution is requesting a zoning special exception, a report from the building department will first be given followed by a petitioner who is given a formal presentation at the podium. If the proposed resolution is requesting a tax abatement, a report from the city's community investment department will be given followed by the petitioner giving a formal presentation at the podium. On all other proposed resolutions, a formal presentation by the petitioner will be given immediately after the committee chairman's report, or chairperson's report, I'm sorry. <coughs> Follow the formal presentation. Council members may ask preliminary questions only, with all other council comments being heard during the council portion. During the public portion, on each proposed resolution, members of the public are invited to address the council. Please give your name and address and comment on each bill. If you have any questions, they will be addressed at, by the presenter during the, their rebuttal <coughs> period. Each member of the public is limited to five minutes with those speaking in favor going first, followed by those in opposition. Then a five minute rebuttal period from the presenter of the bill. With all that said, I'll ask Janice to read <coughs> Resolution 1533. 
A resolution of the Common Council of the City of South Bend designating a certain area within the City of South Bend, Indiana, commonly known as Crescent Oaks, Section 3, as a residentially distressed area for purposes of a five-year residential real property tax abatement for Tampico Developments, LLC. Motion to accept the substitute. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. Committee. Uh, Community Committee. Investment sends yep. this forward favorably. Thank you. Now, Brock. Good evening, Council Members. Uh, proxy, 14th floor of this building, uh, Community Investment. Uh, before you is a residential tax payment for Tempico Developments, LLC. Um, it is a request for a 26-home uh, uh, project. $3.9 million uh, will be spent. Um, the, homes will, the homes will range between 1,400 and 1,800 square feet. The total project uh, or the total taxes uh, created from the project will be 246,532. The total taxes uh, abated during the five-year period will be 213,236. Uh, the total taxes to be paid will be 33,296. The petitioner is here uh, to answer any questions or give you a synopsis of the project if you have any questions. Okay. Uh, questions for Brock. Petition. Sure. Good evening. My name is Daryl Knipp. I'm with Avon Marsh Consultants, 750 Lincoln Way East here in South Bend. Also with me tonight is Mr. Denny Schwartz, who is the uh, sole member of Pico Development. Uh, as Mr. Zeeb says, we are requesting a a uh, five-year tax abatement on Section 3 of Crescent Oaks, uh, similar to what was provided for the, the rest of the lots in the first two sections. Uh, the homes here are uh, uh, middle-class homes ranging from 150, 160 to about 185 to $190,000. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Okay. Council, any questions at this time? Mr. Davis. Yeah. Um, Brock. Yes, sir. As it relates to our tax abatement, um, I have a question, and it's related to tax abatements. Um, <coughs> because of where this is going, it allows the tax abatement to go in place. Um, I'm very much interested in the coming weeks that we uh, begin to discuss how we can take the tax abatement to areas that don't necessarily receive tax abatements. Um, for the very simple fact that that helps promote development in those exact areas. So I need to get to a level of discussion, I guess, with you guys in your department about making sure that those tax abatements are allowed uh, in areas such as Western Avenue is one area that I know right now that the tax abatement is not allowed. We need special exceptions to make it happen. So uh, I do need that to get done very, very soon with the, with the wave that we have right now. Happy to have the discussion instead of a meeting with you, Council Member. Uh, I will say the tax abatement ordinance is open throughout the city. Um, residential is available uh, currently on the on the western side, um, so there isn't a restriction as long as those as long as they come prior to pulling the building permit. We but it goes through a different process. Uh, it depends on it depends on what type of a great example would be Briarcliff, which was not a uh, identified as a specific desired um, type of development that received a tax abatement. Uh, however, that one did receive an exception. Other types of uh, development are already pre-qualified for tax abatements on on the west side. So it just depends on what the ordinances are, but uh, what the ordinance spells out. But I'm happy to happy to set a meeting with you and just and go over that and and bring any projects forward for tax payment that we're well, I'm just not account. talking exactly about the west side. That example was the west side, but mm -hmm. wherever that is not the same as this one is per going to a special exception. You understand what I'm saying? I do. All right. So it just needs to be open across the board, across the whole entire city. But thank you, sir. Yep. Any other questions from council? <coughs> Seeing none, we'll open up to the public. Anyone wishing to speak uh, in favor of the substitute 1533, please come to the podium. Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak against sub 1533, please come to the podium. Seeing none, we'll turn back to council. Motion to adopt substitute 1533. Second. Janice. Mr. Henry Davis, Jr. Mm -hmm. 
I, I think we missed something. Mr. Shea? We did. Public yeah. hearing? No, he asked. We, did, we missed we something. We went through the public hearing. Yeah, we did. said if anybody No, went. it wasn't that. It was, go ahead, it's Robert Rules. I'm sorry. I. No Mr. Shea? Aye. Dr. Fred Furlick? Aye. Dr. Varner? Aye. Council Member Oliver Davis? Aye. Mr. Furlick? Aye. Council Member White? Aye. President Tim Scott? Aye. Eight ayes. Thank you. Thank you. 1533, may I entertain a motion for continuance? Motion to continue. 1535. Thank you. Two. Two. June, June 22nd. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? <coughs> Thank you. Take care. Oh. Okay. Okay. There's all those safety people. Oh. Okay, first readings. First reading on a bill, sorry, Bill 28-15. First reading on a bill amending the zoning ordinance for property located at 742 East Ireland Road, South Bend, Indiana, Councilmanic District Number 5 in the city of South Bend, Indiana. I move to send Bill 28-15 to error plan. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. Bill 29-15, first reading on a bill of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, amending Chapter 21 of the South Bend Municipal Code, as amended by repealing and replacing Article 5, Planned Unit Development Districts. A motion to send 29-15 to area plan. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. Bill 30-15, first reading on a bill of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, appropriating additional funds for certain departmental and city service operations in 2015 of 200000 from local road and streets fund number 251, <coughs> from professional <coughs> development fund number 377, and $316,091 from CEDIT fund number 408. Uh, motion to send 3015 to personnel and finance for 622 for second and third reading. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Bill 31-15, first reading on a bill of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, appropriating additional funds for certain departmental and enterprise operations in 2015 of 14500 from Waterworks Bond Reserve Fund number 626 and 297000 from Century Center Fund number 671. Move to send Bill 31-15, Personnel Finance, for June 22nd, the second and third reading, and public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. Bill 32-15, first reading on a bill of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, for budget transfers for various departments within the City of South Bend, Indiana, for the year 2015. A motion to send 3215 to personnel and finance for a second and third reading on 622. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Unfinished business. Is there anything? Yes, sir. Mr. Davis. Thank you. I wanted to update the council. Um, this past okay. week, um, Council Member White opened the committee up to discuss the assessment uh, or assess value uh, resolution that I had on file. Um, the assessor, um, one of their attorneys, and I think it was maybe the treasurer. Mike Crook. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, the treasurer, Mike Crook, mm -hmm. all came in um, and had a very good conversation about how properties are assessed, uh, how they're being compared to other properties, etc. Uh, I've only wished that more council members could have shown. However, uh, that resolution would come back before you so the discussion, again, hits the council level uh, for a vote. Uh, what they do in that office greatly affects the way that we do business as it relates to property taxes being paid into the state that we get back from the state to do city business. So um, it's a meaningful um, discussion. Uh, and it obviously sets the bar on how many or what can we do as far as providing services here in the city. Uh, again, um, once this comes back up to the council, 
obviously it will be discussed in full detail and I hope that the assessor will be gracious enough to show up again uh, to speak with the council. Um, again, I want to thank uh, Council Member White for opening the committee up and, 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 uh, and allowing that discussion to start uh, for the better of our community. Um, also, I was charged with and I actually forgot. Uh, we have, have we received an update from the administration about MLK Drive? There was no, I have a comment on that. Though. I'm sorry? I have a comment on that. Okay. All right. And the last thing I wanted to, uh, to say something about, uh, this past week I had an opportunity to go out to Palawatomi Park and uh, for a field trip with my son in his class, they go to morning school, he's kindergartner. Uh, we had a very good time. And as a matter of fact, before I got out of my car, I was able to uh, stop on the corner of Green Lawn, and it was another street south something. I can't remember the name, the full name of it is. But that particular street had some beautiful, uh, beautiful, beautiful streetscape things going on over there. I had some brakes lying across, like where the bike lanes would be. You know, it was really, really nice. Um, I only wish, as a council member, that those exciting uh, uh, cosmetic things could happen across the entire city. Um, but right now, we're dealing with getting our grass cut in the west side of the city. I've asked several times, and I'm not stepping on it. Believe me, I like it. Do not get me wrong, I love it. Uh, but what I am saying is that when you deal with, see those type of cosmetic things that are, are appealing to the eye, that are more than the icing on the cake, and you go back to certain areas and you're looking at bushes obstructing uh, the views of people who are driving, when you're looking at houses that are actually being covered with the weeds that are in the front yard, and when you're looking at the simple city services that people are due because of the budget that we approve and they're supposed to be rendered, you cannot have but uh, an ill feeling towards uh, the way things are happening. Um, I also was on the corner of Bergen Street, and I think it was Bergen yeah. and um, Elmer. Elmer Street, thank you, where a young child was riding their bike and they fell on some concrete. Well, the concrete, the sidewalk itself is coming up. You can actually pick it up. And the response that I received back from Public Works was, well, they can get part of the reimbursement program. You're dealing with an area... The census tract area, I'm sure, is probably less than $20,000. And you're asking these same folks to cover the cost of paying for a sidewalk that they don't even own and will never own. No different than what I was talking about, the grass cutting. And this is not a black or white issue. This is not a west side versus east side, north side issue. This has everything to do with people who have or people who do not have at all. And I think that during this budget season, we need to be intentional about making sure the city services that we're supposed to be ha happening. I'm not talking about bringing a corporation in with 1,000 jobs. I'm not talking about uh, cosmetics as it relates to bricks in the street. I'm talking about the simple city services that we're supposed to be rendering that goes to the budget are actually happening in the areas that need it the most. And those are two egregious examples. And I don't know how we continue to miss those things or then the response is, well, they can pay for it. No, they can't pay for it. They can't. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, well, we should. Respond. Um, uh, only uh, pertaining to the permeable um, pavers on the side. Uh, Southwood is 3rd District, and um, that is a long conversation. Um, but. Uh, that was part of the CSO project, and this would be for the utilities committee. I have a question um, as a follow-up. Um, the permeable pavers uh, were used as an alternative to uh, drain um, mm -hmm. pipes, and so um, while I do agree it is attractive, uh, my understanding was that the permeable pavers used in that particular neighborhood were less expensive than having to put in the um, sewer uh, Pipes. Okay, so then that brings another question. So we go and disrupt the other areas and not put the same type of interest or understanding in other areas. 
Pratt Street, for example, or Kennedy Park, where we put these bump out curves, and this is not your fault, but understand what I'm saying. You put bump out uh, curves, uh, disrupt their entire traffic flow in the area, and the quality of life in the area, new stop signs, etc. Bus, school buses cut to the corner, and then you have to let the school bus come out before you can turn in because we're spending more money in the area, which in fact that you have uh, restricted the area from growing, and then we have something that's so much more attractive that allows the street to exist in the manner in which it was built. And, and we are going to say, how does that, it's just inequitable is what I'm saying. You do for one, you do for the other. And I agree, I think we need to have a more conversation on, on that point. Uh, Valerie, anything else? No, I just wanted okay. to highlight that Anybody point. else on council? No, no. Uh, as far as MLK uh, Drive, I'd like to put together by the end of this week uh, a guideline of how we're going to do that with the applications and uh, deadlines for applications as well as uh, what are some of the guidelines. I know myself and Karen White as officers, we met with the mayor and discussed this. When it comes down to it, it is his decision on this and he does have three seats on the committee. So we're waiting for feedback from the administration on some of their guidelines and some of the, the vision that they want to see with the committee. So what I want to at least us do to move the ball forward is get the information out to you guys of what the council would like to see. I would love feedback from the council. Uh, he has three seats on that. How many seats? We have four. That he, he has three. So oh, which? Which is? MLK Drive. Naming them on the No, I mean, he has three seats and we have four seats? Mm -hmm. yes. Yep. It's just an advisory committee. So I'll be sending out an email to council members tomorrow and then uh, hopefully if we get enough feedback from everybody, we can at least start the conversation with the public by the end of this week. No problem. Um, with that, we're done with the unfinished business. Anything new business? Seeing none, we will turn to the privilege of the floor. This is the point that <coughs> the council meeting where members of the public can come and speak at the podium. They're given three minutes. Uh, Councilman Fred, or Gavin Furley will time you and give you a warming exit. You cannot speak on anything that was on the agenda tonight. So any new business that you want to bring before uh, the council, and this is the time for the citizens to talk. Uh, council will not give any statement back to you, uh, but if you want to submit a form for any response formally, we will do that as well. So with that, please state your name and address, and we'll go forward. Jesse Davis, PO Box 10205. I'm uh, coming before you uh, about Bill 2415, which actually I believe will be heard June 22nd as well. Um, the proposed talks about how they're saving money doesn't address any unanswered questions on the sewer insurance program. As I've said before, they brought in a contractor from Kendallville, <coughs> excuse me, replaced all local contracts. He was caught double billing. He was using Sam Hensley's brother as a trucking company and getting paid to do so. And they're also using city equipment and city workers on these repairs now, which we cannot get an accounting of how much of our tax dollars are now being utilized in the sewer insurance program. They claim they were saving all kinds of money, and I brought you some documents. Number one, from a sworn court affidavit from Kevin Dombrowski, stating what the city has spent from 2005 to 2014 on a yearly basis. Kevin Dombrowski makes claims that they spent $1,222,000 in 2009. The mayor provided us with a document here that states in 2009 they spent $630,000 on the insurance program. So you got a discrepancy of $600,000 just in figures that these two guys are giving on that same program. Uh, this so-called saving money I did thousands of jobs for the city over about a 20 year period. I can pull up every bill that I ever built the city for a sewer repair. My average bill was $1,585 for a sewer repair. 
in your new bill that you're wanting to propose, you're claiming the average sewer repair under that sewer program is $7,000. That's a $400,000 increase. Don't understand what that is. Now you also want to take responsibility for landscaping the yards, and you want to provide $1,000 for fixing the yard and landscaping. I have to question who the landscapers are going to be. Is it going to be Phil St. Clair's son, who we know has a contract with yes, the city cemetery? Is it going to be the Pembertons, who three resigned from the city, who happen to own three separate landscaping companies? Why are we putting ourselves on the hook for landscaping when we've never done that in the past? But numbers don't lie. There's a whole lot of documents I hope you'll really take a look at and uh, get to the bottom of this before you pass this new ordinance change. Thank you, sir. Next. Samuel Brown, representing Citizen United for a better government. The Rocky Rock Group in South Bend, living 222 East Nevada Street, also in the city of South Bend. Uh, Lincoln Way is, I mean, Lincoln Way West. I really don't understand it. I just, I'm just totally confused. You can't get out on them side streets on a dry day. I mean, you gotta have a real race car. Get out there. You remove the stoplights. All you gotta do is take a ride with me and I can show you what I'm talking about. I know that never happened, so we'll move on. Now, winter is coming eventually. I think in South Bend, eventually we'll get a winner. Lord have mercy. I would hate for somebody coming off the side street trying to get down on Lincoln Way. It's going to be bad. My next one I'd like to talk to you real briefly about, I had a code enforcement guy that took him on a complaint. One of our city lots, one, well, let's say like this, one of our big houses was taken down over this lot. This humongous tree is hanging over this way over the guy's garage. And I said, uh, you took the house down, but you didn't do nothing about chopping the tree and getting that back over on the lot. He said, well, don't worry about that. He said, uh, it's called your insurance company. <laughs> I said, if that tree falls, or any of it, the way we have the storm, they're going to take out that whole garage and probably half of his house. He said, well, I'll talk to the forester. I said, who is that? He said, well, we got a forester, and I'll talk to him. But I really don't think nothing to be done about it because the city don't own that lot. I said, well, who owns that lot? Well, I don't know. I get back with you. So, we're taking these houses down, and we got a lot of stuff that needs to be cleaned up. So I hope somebody get back with me. Uh, we had a storm come through last night. Probably might have one tonight. And I keep checking on that garage with all these guys, motorcycles, and all this line work. I just pray. So somebody get back with me. Okay, thank you. Next. <coughs> Good evening. My name is Keith D. Schrock, president of Lord Marketing in South Bend, Facebook-based. Uh, I'm going to mention the SB 150. I know you're not supposed to bring up old business, but in past, the past couple of years, South Bend has been called a dead city. There was quite a flare-up on Twitter. I would estimate a quarter million postings on uh, Twitter itself. And, I, and I'm and i not going to second or third level once it spins and goes viral. I didn't even attempt to try to track those. But it's just on the first level, people having three to 5,000 or 10,000 followers, as you might uh, well imagine. And a lot of those do as I do. They auto-post to Facebook. When I post to Facebook, it posts to Twitter. When I post to Twitter, it posts to Facebook. So it happens quickly. I posted your your good things on the SB 150 tonight, so I kind of missed missed that play right there. Uh, I'd like to end it on an upbeat note. Uh, the uh, SB 150 was a rousing success. I walked about half of it, and it just uh, absolutely blew the ethnic festival or anything probably since the Studebakers uh, were around and, and active as a corporation. I think you ought to go out giving yourself a high five and an added boy, and that's good in corporations, and I think it's good in the council. Uh, last point, a major uh, Chicago magazine has picked that up, and we like to think we helped spin syndicate uh, content around AP and UPI type newspaper things. Uh, the photos 
from the uh, colored fountains, the blues and the pinks and all that. And as a result of myself or the mayors or whatever syndication, the Chicago Mag Mag Magazine has uh, named South Bend as the number one honeymoon destination for Chicagoland people. Yeah. So Chicago and South Bend are getting a lot closer with the South Bend Cubs. The South Shore going faster and SB 150. Thank you. Thank you. Next. <laughs> yes, my name is Daryl McKinney, 501 Alonzo Watson Drive uh, here in South Bend. Um, I, I've been driving down Cushing for some time now. Um, last year and this year. <coughs> And I believe it's the corner of uh, Cushing and California. I want to say California. But that street department needs to get out there and get those trees with those overhanging branches over the stop signs. Because you hit that first block, you can't see that stop sign. I mean, you can't see it at all until you get right up on it and slam your brake. And then by then, you know, no telling where you didn't went. You didn't hit another car or there's going to be a major accident over there. Take my word, take my word for it. But the street department needs to get us on Cushing, the first block of Cushing, the street signs over your stop signs. You can't see them because the trees are just blocking the stop signs, and it's, it's pretty horrible over there. All right. That's Thank it. you. All right. Anyone else? Cena, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all. Good night. It's Cushing and California. And the trees are holding the stop